Welcome back once again, all my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy keto recipe for you. Today, I am going to show you how to make keto drop biscuits using bamboo fiber. And if you can't find bamboo fiber or you just don't want bamboo fiber, you can use oat fiber instead. I am really becoming a bamboo fiber fan when it comes to bread. But we'll see if it is in these biscuits. So if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos at least every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. I am also on cal.com. I'll put a link in the description. Click the link and you can tip me any amount you want and that will also go to help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line a large baking sheet with parchment paper and set it aside for a minute. In a medium mixing bowl, combine 50 grams or a little over a half cup of bamboo fiber or oat fiber. Add 14 grams or around two tablespoons of coconut flour, seven grams or around one tablespoon of very fine flaxseed meal. I like golden flaxseed meal because I like the color and the taste of it better, but dark flaxseed meal will work just fine. I like to regrind my flaxseed meal so it's fine enough to go through a mesh strainer and then I measure the seven grams or one tablespoon after I regrind it. Add three grams or around one teaspoon of xanthan gum. If you don't want to use xanthan gum, you can use cognac powder or psyllium husk powder or you can check out my article on different xanthan gum substitutes. That should work. Just keep in mind any substitutes can affect the texture, especially with high fiber flours. Add 5 grams or around 1 teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of salt, 9 grams or around 1 tablespoon of instant dry yeast. This is optional. It does not do anything for rising. It is simply for taste. So your biscuits can taste a little bit more like traditional biscuits. If you want to, you can add some dry seasonings or dry spices to give your biscuits a different flavor. I just want mine to be a neutral flavor, so I'm not adding anything. Sift the dry ingredients together until everything is fully combined and there are no lumps. Then set the bowl aside for a minute. In a large mixer bowl, combine two large room temperature eggs. Make sure they're room temperature. It makes for a smoother dough, which makes for a fluffier biscuit. Add 120 grams or around a half cup of plain Greek yogurt and 15 milliliters or around one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This will not make your bread taste like vinegar. It's simply to help the texture of the bread to be a little more firm. Beat the wet ingredients all together until everything is fully combined and smooth. If you don't have a standing mixer, you can use a hand mixer or you can just use a wooden spoon. It'll stir together just fine. Once the wet ingredients are all combined and smooth, then turn your mixer on to low and gradually add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients. Just do this in small amounts and let the dry ingredients beat into the wet ingredients after each addition. Once the dry ingredients are fully added, increase your speed to medium low and beat on medium low for another 20-30 seconds or just until everything is fully combined and a dough forms. You can stop and scrape down the sides of the bowl as needed. Make sure all the dry ingredients get fully incorporated. After everything is combined, you should have a very wet, moist, sticky dough, almost like a very thick batter. Just make sure it's smooth and everything is combined. Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push everything to the center of the bowl. Then allow the mixture to sit about 10 minutes so it can absorb a little bit and thicken a little bit more. After about 10 minutes, your dough is still going to be very wet, very sticky, but you should be able to pick it up in your hands and shape just a little bit. Divide the dough into four portions. Each portion's gonna be around 72 grams or around one third of a cup, give or take some. Then form each portion into smooth balls and place them on your lined baking sheet. Make sure you leave space in between each one of the biscuits. Keep the dough balls as even and as smooth as you can. Use your hands and slightly flatten the tops of each one of the dough balls. 
These do expand some, but they don't expand a lot. So pretty much whatever thickness that you flatten it out to, that's for the most part what it's going to be. If you want to, you can sprinkle the tops of each one of the biscuits with some seeds or with some toppings of your choice. I'm just sprinkling it with some everything bagel seasoning, but you can leave it plain if you prefer it plain. Place the biscuits in your preheated oven. Bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until the biscuits are golden. After the biscuits are baked, remove them from the oven and allow them to cool in the pan for about 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, transfer the biscuits to a wire rack and allow them to cool completely before slicing them. When you're ready to use them, turn the biscuits on their side and cut them in half to create a top and a bottom. All right, we are back with my yummy looking biscuits. Don't those look delicious? Oh my goodness. This is the first keto biscuit that I've made that actually looks like a biscuit. I mean, has the coloring. You know, my other biscuits, my coconut flour biscuits, they're shaped like a biscuit, but they don't quite have the same shading. You know, most biscuits, they have a little bit dark on top and a lighter on the bottom. These have such a nice shading and they expanded good. They didn't expand a lot, of course, because it's gluten-free, so it's not going to expand a lot, but it did expand a little bit, which is good. So that means there should be some air inside there, so it should make a nice crumb on the inside. I made these yesterday because I wanted to see how they were gonna store, and they did store very well. They didn't dry out or anything. I just put them in a Ziploc bag just to see. I popped this one back in the microwave just to get a little bit of warmth in it because that's gonna be our sample, but let me show you what the inside of this looks like. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. I cut it in half and then I cut it in half again so you can see the top and the bottom here. But it's got a very, very nice looking crumb in there. It looks really good. And again, this has xanthan gum in it. So just like any other recipe with xanthan gum, there is going to be a slight moist texture. But I will say after it sat overnight, the moist texture pretty much went away. So if you use it the first day, it'll have a very slight, not wet, but a slight moist touch to it. But by the next day, it's pretty much gone. It still is a very soft, moist bread. These would make good sandwich biscuits, breakfast biscuits. I mean, they look delicious and smells really, really good. I didn't put anything on this because I like to eat them plain just to see what they actually taste like. Looks good, smells good, looks like real bread. Smells like real bread. Let's taste this. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is good. And that has the texture of bread. I think from now on when I make bread recipes or anything that has a bread base, I'm going to be using the bamboo fiber. Oat fiber works fine too. But I will say that there is a little bit different texture in oat fiber and bamboo fiber. I told you guys that in my bamboo fiber experiment. This was a very, very good success. I really, really like that. Delicious. Going to be great on sandwiches or with my gravy. Mm, yeah, yummy. Mm, 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 mm. You can eat these immediately. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to three days, or you can store them in an airtight container in your freezer for up to one month. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.